this evening. Sorry about that. Uh, hope you're doing well. Welcome to everyone here in the church. Welcome to everyone online with us. Uh, evening, Waylon. Good to have you with us. Evening, Debbie and Tammy. Good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. And looks like there's some others, but I don't see your name. So please uh, let me know you're on with us because I can't see who else is on with us. So please tell me good evening. I've got a good crowd on there, but I can't see exactly who all is on. So please let me know who is on with me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with a few announcements here as as people are still jumping on and, and we're getting started here. So, evening Mary, good to have you with us. Evening Terry, good to have you with us. Thank you all for joining us. Um, so, our schedule is as follows and it has been for a while. Sunday mornings, 9.30 is our Sunday school hour. 10.30 is our morning worship. And then Wednesday evenings, of course, here, 7 p.m. is our mid Bible study. Um, and uh, there's a change for this coming Sunday, though, and that's part of the announcement. Sunday morning, evening, Ken and Paul, good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Um, this Sunday morning, in the Fellowship Hall at 8.30 a.m., we'll be celebrating our mothers by... It's Mother's Day, so we're going to be celebrating a few different ways. But first, we're going to have a breakfast together. That the youth is going to join us in the Fellowship Hall Sunday morning at 8.30 for breakfast. And that will last from 8.30 to about 9.15. And then everyone will migrate over to the church, and we'll have Sunday school hour at 9.30 and then morning worship at 10.30. Um, so again, please join us for breakfast in the Fellowship Hall this Sunday morning at 8.30. Hope to see you there. Um, pulpit Supply. Uh, this Sunday, um, Jeff Peterson will be speaking in our morning worship service. And again, that's Mother's Day. Uh, next Sunday, um, Richard, Reverend Richard Vandervoort, our former pastor from 72 to 82, will be here speaking in our morning worship service. And he'll be serving communion. So... Um, Oh, okay, sorry about that. David was checking something. Evening Candy, good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. So, um, so on, again, on um, Sunday, April 15th, Reverend Richard Vandervoort, our former pastor, will be back here speaking in the morning worship service and will be partaking of communion. So, hope you're able to join us. We haven't had communion here in the church since Pastor Nicolo retired. Uh, and that's because in the church of Nazarene, it has to be given by an ordained elder of the Nazarene church. So uh, we're, we're glad to have Reverend Vandervoort with us that Sunday. And then the rest of the May schedule, uh, May 22nd, David Painter will be back with us, as well as May 29th, David Painter will be back with us. So speaking both of those Sundays, David Sander, good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Um, let's see, what other things do we have here? And again, this Sunday is Mother's Day. Hope you come out and join us. Come Join your mother, what have you, uh, here for Mother's Day this Sunday. There will be a, 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 a gift given to each lady. Every lady in the church will get a gift, and then we're going to have a few special mothers recognized, and I believe the one who's been the mother the longest, the one who's been the mother the shortest amount of time, and then the mother that has the most children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren present in service Sunday. So, again, I hope you're able to join us. Hey, go sit down with Daddy. Hope you're able to join us. I hope you're able to join us and uh, celebrate your mother this Sunday especially. And if you, even if you're not able to, work, be able to be with us, cel make sure you celebrate your mother this Sunday, Mother's Day. Um, if anyone's interested in helping with the Shirley Home Ministry, please sign up on the sign-up sheet out there in the hallway. We do have some signed up. We need a few more. We'd like to get that ministry back up and running. We have done that for many, many, many years in COVID hit, and then we haven't been back down there since COVID. Uh, Mary says it's really scratchy too, David. Mary says, it, Mary says it's really scratchy too. So. We're not sure. I'm going with the, the feed a little bit here. We're working on it. Um, a lot of static and sounds choppy. Okay, so Dave's trying to fix that. So, uh, sorry about that. We're working on it. I'm not sure what's going on. Let me turn the mic off and on again. Let me see if that would help. Just wait a second. Okay, it's back on. So, 
Hopefully that'll help. Is it back up? Audio back up? Okay. All right. Well, if we, we'll try to work with it if it ha we have some other issues. We're not sure exactly what the issues are. Oh. Hey, we all sound good in here. <laughs> all right. So other announcements. Um, let's see. Monday, May 9th, is our monthly church board meeting. So board members, please take note. Please meet in the fellowship hall Monday, May 9th at 7 p.m. for our monthly church board meeting. And then Wednesday, May 18th, there will be no Bible study that night because we meeting, the board will be meeting with uh, Dr. Bowser concerning pastoral search. So, uh, again, no Bible study May 18th, but please be keeping your board and church in prayer as we are working on our pastoral call. Um, that's all in the way of announcements this evening. Um, at least if, if there are any other ones, um, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Remind me if there are other announcements. Oh, yes, following service uh, Sunday morning, a quick meeting for all. Uh, I did have information on that. So if anyone's going to Sight and Sound, please uh, be prepared just to stay a few minutes afterwards. I have some information. All right. All right, we're going to go ahead and start our worship time, and David's working on the sound there a little bit. So... Uh, turn your hymnals to hymn number 520, The Cleansing Wave, 520, 520. Oh, now I see the crimson wave, the fountain deep and wide. Jesus, my Lord, mighty to save, points to his wounded side. The cleansing stream I see, I see, I plunge in, oh, it cleanseth me. Oh, praise the Lord, it cleanseth me. It cleanseth me, yes, cleanseth me. I see the new creation rise. I hear the speaking blood. It speaks polluted, nature dies, sinks neath the cleansing flood. The cleansing stream I see, I see, I plunge in, oh, it cleanseth me. Oh, praise the Lord, it cleanseth me, it cleanseth me, yes, cleanseth me. I rise to walk in heaven's own light above the world and sin. With heart made pure and garments white and Christ enthroned within. The cleansing stream I see, I see, I plunge in, oh, it cleanseth me. Oh, praise the Lord, it cleanseth me. It cleanseth me, yes, cleanseth me. Amazing grace is heaven below to feel the blood applied. And Jesus only, Jesus know, my Jesus crucified. The cleansing stream I see, I see, I plunge in, oh, it cleanseth me. Oh, praise the Lord, it cleanseth me. It cleanseth me, yes, cleanseth me. Amen. Evening, Dorcas, good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us, and I hope the, vo the audio is a little better. I mean, okay, so hopefully we got the, vo the, the audio fixed. Thank you, David, for that. You did. You just don't know you did it, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, 521 in your hymnal. This is like heaven to me, 521. 
Evening, Dan and Connie. Good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. We find many for who can... Oh, man. I'm... Oh, let's skip that one. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Let's skip that one. Go to 458. 458. I picked that one, and I, I had to tune him ahead, but I don't think I had it. <laughs> I don't think I had it. So, evening, Pastor Miss Linda. Good to have you with us. Thanks for joining. Yeah, I got a little bit of sun on my face. That's for sure, Terry. 458. Yeah, and just another announcement real quick before we do this song. If you're on Facebook Live and you want to jump over to YouTube Live, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, because we are built, we have a fix in there for right now for that, a temporary one, and hopefully we'll have a permanent fix here very soon. So you, we are broadcasting tonight both on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. So you can jump over to YouTube Live if you so choose. All right, 458, fill my cup, Lord. 458. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that would not satisfy. And then I heard the Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. There are millions in this world who are craving the pleasures earthly things afford. But none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ my Lord. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. So, my brother, if the things this world gave you leave hungers that won't pass away, my blessed Lord will come and save you if you kneel to him and humbly pray. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Amen. Dave, would you come and take up the offering at this time? Uh, just want to remind you that if you're unable to be with us in person, you uh, can anytime mail your giving into the church. Mail it to Orbazonia Church of the Nazarene, P.O. Box 1, Orbazonia, P.A. 17243. Uh, I want to thank you, each and every one, for being generous givers. You stay right there, buddy. I want to thank you all for being generous givers. Uh, again, the church is blessed. Uh, we're able to pay the bills. We're able to take care of the ministries we are, are, are supporting. And, and just as a side note, and I'll announce this again Sunday morning for those who aren't on tonight, um, we gave a very good offering to the Gideons Sunday morning. We gave them $750 to purchase Bibles, and every single penny of that will go 
towards purchasing Bibles. Uh, and there's no overhead and all that because the membership from all the Gideons, they pay any of that that happens to be overhead. And every dollar donated from churches towards Bibles goes towards Bibles, every single penny. So, again, thank you for the good offering Sunday. And if anyone else wasn't able to give Sunday, you can always, again, you can mail it to us or bring it next Sunday or whatever, Mark Gideon, and we'll make sure it gets to them for sure. But, again, a wonderful offering. Um, pastor did tell me, we visited the pastor here Saturday, and he told me a story. He said he asked one of the Gideons one time, he said, um, how, you know, how do we compare in our giving, you know, when you go around to churches? Are we doing okay? And he said, he said, for a church your size, your giving is tremendous. He said, we go, he says, he said, I have a personal testimony. He says, I went to a church one time as, as representing the Gideons and spoke. And it was a big, big church. There were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people there. And after he was done, they took up an offering and they gave $5. Oh my $5 at a big church. So, uh, again, thank you for your giving. $750 from, uh, from our church towards the Gideons is tremendous. So, again, thank you. Thank you for your giving. All right, um, Dave, would you pray for the offering? Yep. Would you pray for the offering, David? Amen. Amen. Thank you for your giving. All right, turn with me in your hymnals to hymn number 526. Hopefully I picked one other one I knew. 526, I don't remember what I picked. Oh, this is the chorus, Let the Beauty of Jesus Be Seen in Me. We don't sing this very often. I love this chorus. Um, so I want to sing, we'll go sing this through twice this evening. Yeah, we can do it again Sunday morning, 526. A little bit faster time. Mm -hmm. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All oh, his wonderful passion and purity. Oh, thou spirit divine, oh, my nature refine. Till the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All oh, his wonderful passion and purity. Oh, thou spirit divine. All oh, my nature refine till the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Amen. Amen. Yeah, just a little. Yeah, that was good. That was good tempo. Turn with me in your hymnals to hymn number 556 till the storm passes by. We have a lot of storms in our life, right? Got gas prices through the roof, got grocery prices through the roof, we got grocery shortages, we got inflation, the stock market's down, there are health issues, you name it. There's a lot of storms in our life. But you know what? We can always cling to the Lord and we can always find a safe place in the Lord till the storm passes by. Amen. 556. In the dark of the midnight have I oft hid my face While the storms howl above me and there's no hiding place Mid the crash of the thunder 
Precious Lord, hear my cry, keep me safe till the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispered, There is no need to try, For there's no end of sorrow, There's no hope by and by. But I know thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll rise where the storm never darkens the sky. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. When the long night has ended and the storms come no more, let me stand in thy presence on that bright, peaceful shore, in that land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Amen. I love that hymn. 570. 570 in your hymnal. <clears throat> I've anchored in Jesus. And that's where you better be. <laughs> <clears throat> Evening, Travis. Good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Upon life's boundless oceans where mighty billows roll, I fix my hope in Jesus, blessed anchor of my soul. When trials pierce assail me as storms are gathering o'er, I rest upon his mercy and trust him more. I've anchored in Jesus, the storms of life I'll brave. I've anchored in Jesus, I fear no wind or wave. I've anchored in Jesus, for he hath power to save. I've anchored in the rock of ages. He keeps my soul from evil, he gives me blessed peace. His voice has stilled the waters and bid the tumult cease. My pilot and deliverer, to him I'll all confide. For always when I need him, he's at my side. I've anchored in Jesus, the storms of life I'll brave. I've anchored in Jesus, I fear no wind or wave. I've anchored in Jesus, for he hath power to save. I've anchored in the rock of ages. 
He is my friend and savior, in him my anchors cast. He drives away my sorrows and shields me from the blast. By faith I'm looking upward beyond life's troubled sea. There I behold a haven prepared for me. I've anchored in Jesus, the storms of life I'll brave. I've anchored in Jesus, I fear no wind or wave. I've anchored in Jesus, for he hath power to save. I've anchored in the rock of ages. Amen. All right, we're going to go to prayer at this time. I want to remember all those on our church prayer request list. Um, I want to remember all those that were mentioned Sunday. There were many, many requests mentioned Sunday. Uh, I want to especially remember Mildred Boer this evening. I know uh, we've got a call that she's not doing well at all. So please remember Mildred Boer and Jim there with her. Um, can you remember the pastor and Miss Linda, of course, as the pastor's recovering, and uh, he will be getting uh, radiation treatments here very soon. Uh, keep him in your prayers, as well as Miss Linda and and all that. Uh, continue uh, pray for Steph's mom. She's having her eye surgery. You don't know when. They're not sure when, They're not sure when yet, but it's coming up. Um, remember uh, Dan Brooks as he was uh, having some uh, a physical to prepare to see if he can get his. His uh, eye operation as well. So remember Dan. Um, huh? Oh, remember my wife as she's having her next back injection this Friday. Uh, pray that goes well and it, that helps. Um, can you remember Rose? Uh, she, she gave me a praise there on Sunday. I, I, I walked out and took her mail out of the church mailbox to her there Sunday. And um, she said, she, they've been trying her on a lot of stuff, and none of it was working, and her kidney function was not improving, and she was ready to go on dialysis, and tried something different last week, and all of a sudden her kidney function improved, and it worked, and she's not ha at the moment she doesn't have to go on dialysis, so she's not to praise. So, so and she was up. Yeah, I did see she was up there at Crossroads Pregnancy Center, Run Baby Run, supporting and walking that. Up there, the 5K they had up there, the, the rock and roll. So, but yeah, praise the Lord for that, that she doesn't have to go on dialysis, at least for now. She says uh, the medicine they've tried her on this time is working, helping her for now. So, praise the Lord for that. There were a few other praises there Sunday morning. Uh, can you remember um, Ron Devil, some of the things he's dealing with there, and his back, and some other issues? And, um, uh, oh, okay, so. Uh, Pastor Nicholas told the surgeon yesterday he needs to heal more before they start his radiation. So continue to pray for his healing, and then, of course, for the radi through the radiation once that begins as well. Thanks for that update, Miss Linda. Appreciate that. Um, any other praises or prayer requests this evening? Um, many, many Sunday night. I couldn't begin to remember them all. Uh, remember uh, David and Amy Painter? Is, they're preparing to move up here. Right now, they're preparing to move into Janet and Alvin's home and, and, and stay there temporarily until they build their own place. Uh, they don't know what temporary is yet, but uh, there's a lot of change going on there. And their youngest daughter, she's going to start high school here at Southern when they move up. The oldest one, I think, is, I think uh, Sarah's going to stay down there. She's graduating high school here in a few weeks, and I think she's going to be going to school down there. But um, remember them as they're preparing to move up here uh, and all that goes on there, and as well as the Masterpiece Retreat Center of Ministry and all the things they're doing as well. Um, any other praises or prayer requests this evening? Debbie and Dorcas are both online with us this evening, so... Um, have them online with us. Uh, remember um, Christina, Aunt Bernie, and a few others that are with them. I think LaVon is with them, I think, too, and uh, Gemma. Uh, is w they're, they, they're down in Tennessee. I believe they're traveling back Friday or Saturday, something like that. So we'll see, hope we'll see them. Remember them as they're on vacation and they're going uh, be traveling back from Tennessee here in a few days. So remember them. Um, Remember my friend uh, Chris, is he, uh, him and his family are getting ready to pick up and move uh, 
from the lower Michigan to northern Michigan. Um, they're selling. They're getting ready to sell their house. Um, he he grew up in northern Michigan, so they're moving closer to his family and and some other things. And but he he's looking for a new job. His wife's looking for a new job, so they're preparing to they're selling their house right now. So uh, just remember them and all that. Uh, unspoken requests then. Yes, many of those. All right, if you're able, please stand as we go to prayer then before uh, here this evening. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many, many wonderful blessings. We thank you for this another beautiful day, another day that we were able to uh, be alive in it and serve you and be here this evening to worship you and just to, to be here in fellowship with, with our, the family of God. And Lord, we, we are so blessed. We are blessed people. And Lord, may we truly always be content and be thankful people. Lord, I ask that you would undertake for all the requests that were mentioned here this evening, all the names that are on our church prayer request list, all the needs um, that were mentioned Sunday as well, Father. Lord, I ask that you would just undertake for each and every one of those. I pray that you would just send your blessing and your healing and your touch and your strength, and um, especially there to pastor as, as he has to heal up before he starts radiation. We ask that you just touch him especially and, and help him to heal up uh, uh, ver quickly and completely there and, and that the radiation would go well with him. And, and, and Lord, for Mildred there especially, I believe she's in the hospital right now, and, and all that's going on there, uh, help her touch her and give her comfort and draw her close to you and, and help Jim there as he's with her as well. Father, we uh, want to ask especially that you would be with our church in these days. Lord, the world is, is gone crazy. The world doesn't like us very much. It, 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 you could say it hates us, Lord. And so help us to continue to stay strong. Help us to stand for you and your truth, and the truth of your word at all times and and help us to continue to be a lighthouse for you here on this corner and to, and to always be a loving family of God as we gather together in fellowship and worship together. Lord, I ask you just to just bless the remainder of this service this evening. Bless the word as it is open. Bless the lesson and use it for your glory to encourage us, to teach us, and to strengthen us. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. All right. We are working through our book 30 Life Principles. We are on principle 24. And yes, I'll mention again, I need to get to the Christian bookstore and get the next book. <laughs> We're getting close to the end of this book. So I got that. It, no ifs, ands, or buts. I got to get down there and do it. So I'll be doing that maybe this week. Um, but this has been a good book. I, I think I've, I've gotten something out of it every single week. And I hope you have as well. Every life principle is an important spirit to all of us as Christians and glean a little bit of. Uh, out of each one, or however that is, so I, I hope that I hope they've been beneficial to you. They've been beneficial to me for sure. So to get started this evening, tonight's life principle: to live the Christian life is to allow Jesus to live His life in and through us. To live the Christian life is to allow Jesus to live His life in and through us. And of course, that's through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's that's the Holy Spirit's job. As, as he works in our lives, right? So that's the life principle this evening. So start off with the, the lesson questions at the beginning. What troubles your heart today? What is bothering you? What concerns are consuming you with fear and doubt? What things are on your mind? Do you realize that it's not your place to worry about that person, situation, or issue, whatever it is that's bothering you, it's not your place to do that. You don't, you're not called to worry. I don't, you'll never find any place in the Bible where it calls you to worry anywhere. We do it because we, we're human. We have emotions. And I know I'm, don't, I'm not putting anyone down for worrying. We all do it. We all have concerns. But the principle, we're not called to worry. We are called to trust in the Lord. So this principle this evening is going to be is, is going to teach us the way that we do trust in Him, so we don't have to worry. Um, have you come to the understanding that everything that concerns you is Christ's responsibility to care for rather than yours, and that your job, your jo your only job is to simply obey Jesus? That's your job. Obey Him. David wrote in Psalm one thirty eight seven and eight, though I walk in the midst of trouble. Your right hand will save me. 
The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. The Lord will take care of that which is concerning to you always. You may be so used to taking care of yourself and end up being independent and of, or maybe of, of taking care of others that this is a difficult truth to accept at times. However, if you embrace this life principle, then you'll experience all the peace, the joy, the confidence, the assurance that are rightfully yours as a child of Jesus Christ. If you don't, then you're going to be continued to be distracted in your life, distracted by the issues that were never yours to worry about to begin with. And you're going to miss out on blessings of the abundant life that God has planned for you. If you spend your time worrying, I guarantee you, you're going to miss out on the abundant life that God has for you. The blessings, you're, you're going to be thinking about your problems, thinking about your concerns, and miss blessings right in front of you. So God doesn't want you to do that. So God doesn't want you to worry. So we're going to start our scripture reading this evening in the book of Acts. And it's Acts 15, 1 through 5 is our first scripture, short scripture. Acts 15, 1 through 5. And this is the council at Jerusalem. And this is Paul speaking. And um, you'll, pick up, you'll probably recognize some of this, uh, hopefully. But this is Paul speaking, okay? The council at Jerusalem. This is Paul speaking to the council. Some men came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the brothers, unless you're circumcised according to the customs taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. Well, we know that's not true. And so did Paul. So Paul has an answer, right? This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the brothers very glad. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders, to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to obey the law of Moses. Okay? Now, I wanna, that's, we're going to read another scripture before we get into the lesson any farther, but that's the background of what's going on here. There's this contention in the New, the New Testament church, the early church, because you, you had Jewish believers and you had Gentile believers. The Jews were all circumcised. The Jews were all still following uh, Jewish uh, customs, rituals, laws. They were, they were following dietary laws. They were fo following ceremony laws, right? And if you read enough of the New Testament, you'll see where it says that's not how you're saved, right? We know that. We know that's not how you're saved. But it's also not required to be added to your salvation. So that's the background for where we start here. So then I'm going to read from Galatians uh, chapter 2. And I'm going to read verses 11 through 13. Galatians 2, 11 through 13. And now, after what just happened, Paul speaks to Peter. Paul speaks to Peter because Peter has been found out that he has some issues with this as well. Okay, verses 11 through 13. When Peter came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he was clearly in the wrong. Now, this would seem like something very mean today. People in a lot of churches today say, this is mean. You, sh you should never confront somebody. Oh, we just got to love on people till they get it. No, there's a time to confront people when they're not walking in the truth. They're not walking. This is even Peter. Paul is confronting Peter to his face. Okay, and this may seem a little harsh, but this is the proper way to have church discipline, to, to, to have you know, to deal with issues in the church. Um, before certain men came from James, he, talking about Peter, used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they, the peop, those Jews arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he, because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy. So by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. So, what's going on here? What's going on here? Well, Peter, if you remember, he had a vision. He had a vision where God dropped this sheet down to him and said, Peter, get up, kill and eat. And in that sheet, there were animals of every kind. 
even animals that Jews no would not eat normally because they considered them unclean. We'll say pigs would be a good, good example. Here, God was giving him um, a lesson that was spiritual as well as physical, okay? The kosher laws really didn't have to be followed anymore because of what God was instituting here through Jesus, right? Remember, the kosher laws and all the ceremonial, all the, well, the, the sacrifice at the temple, that wasn't even going to be required anymore, right? So all that was a precursor always looking to Jesus. Now that Jesus had come, had, had lived, had died on the cross and raised from the dead and went back and ascended back to heaven, those things, the Jewish law like that, that they, they, they didn't need those anymore, the kosher, right? We're not talking about moral laws. Moral laws never change. Thou shalt not murder. That's a universal moral law. But those laws and regulations that were specifically for the Jews to follow, dietary, ceremonial, and all that stuff, those were not, those were done away with. It was the moral laws that everyone still had to follow. Well, anyhow, Peter, after this vision, remember, remember God gets his attention and he meets a uh, Gentile and he, him and his family are saved. And so Peter then now becomes a, a minister of the gospel to the Gentiles. And he goes and does some, starts to do something that Jews never did. Because they're kosher, Jews would never go eat in the home of a Gentile because they, they, they would become un, ceremonially unclean Jewishly, right? And they were not to eat um, non-kosher food. But Peter started to eat with his new Gentile converts, with his new Gentile friends. And I can imagine when this is all happening by now, Peter is probably getting addicted to bacon <laughs> or ham or something like that, right? He's, uh, whatever it is, he's sitting down at dinner with Gentiles and eating. And he does this, except when other Jews show up that he's worried about what they're going to think, his hypocrisy raises up, and he all of a sudden, all of a sudden the Gentiles he always goes to dinner with, son, come Sunday morning after worship, they're going, are you coming over to our house this week, Peter? Peter? Oh, no, 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 I can't go to your house looking around at the other Jews that are watching him. Hypocrisy. He's not living truthful. You either live it all the time or none of the time. And Peter was being hypocritical. So the first question here is, why does Paul criticize Peter? What was the dispute? So he criticizes Peter because he's being a hypocrite. He eats with the Gentiles when there's no Jews around for, to see him. But when the Jews show up, all of a sudden he's like, oh, no, I, I wouldn't touch that ham. Mm, no. So he's being a hypocrite. That's the first thing, okay? Peter was eating with the uncircumcised, which the Jews never would do, until the circumcised Jews are, show up and are around, and then he's kind of worried about what people, what they're going to think. Well, what do they think? We should never worry about what other people think. We need to worry about what God thinks. And, and so, again, you either do something all the time or none of the time. Live right all the time is what you should be doing. Um, so he was treating, and then that ended up treating the Gentiles differently when Jews were around. That wasn't right. And then, not only that, what happens is Peter's example is then picked up by the others, and even Barnabas is led astray by Peter's hypocrisy. Paul says he's, and Paul's, not, he, Paul's upset. He's like, you're being hypocrites. All of you, you're being hypocrites. Live right all the time, okay? So, again, that's the background of all that's going on, is, is, is this right here. So now we're going to read the next scripture here, which is Galatians 2. 14 through 21 to 14 through 21. When I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter in front of them all, that, get that, that boy, that would not go over very well in church today. In front of them all, you're a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then you could force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? So again, it's a double-edged sword. You're going to eat with the Gentiles and eat their bacon. But then you're on the other flip side. When the Jews show up, you're going to say, but you guys got to be circumcised. No. No. So again, getting our eyes off of the main thing and looking at things that were not salvation issues. Getting hung up on rituals and, and, and actions and works is what's happening here. Okay? Um, so... 
Uh, we who are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners know that a man is not justified by observing the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by observing the law. Because by observing the law, no one is justified. If while we seek to be justified in Christ, it becomes evident that we ourselves are sinners, does that mean Christ, is, Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. If I rebuild what I destroyed, I prove that I'm a lawbreaker. For through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and would go the whole way in a mask. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, and gave him, sorry, I'm going to read that verse again. I've turned two pages. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, Mike, good to have you with us. Um, so, what is Paul's counsel here to Peter? What's, what's his counsel to Peter over his hypocrisy? First is, stop being a hypocrite. Stop being a hypocrite. Live right. Don't act one way around one set of people and another way around another set of people. Secondly, Try stop trying to make the Jews, or try, stop trying to make the Gentiles into Jews. They're not Jews. They're Gentiles. They don't need to be circumcised. They don't have to follow our kosher laws. They don't. Have, you know, they just need to put their faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, so with that, the next question is: How is a person justified or saved? It's in what. In the blood of Christ, by faith in Christ alone. So, all this other peripheral stuff, rituals, works, whatever, didn't matter. Now, again, don't get me wrong. Jesus didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. But that fulfill the law is a moral thing. The other things, the ceremonial washings, you know, the kosher laws, those weren't of the heart. Those were physical. So, the, the, again, the moral laws, thou shalt not murder. You know, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie. All those things, they are still in effect. Now, the, following them don't save you, but if you're saved, you'll follow them. See? I think it's amazing how Paul, when he got converted, he got converted 100%. He said he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Yep. He, was, he had a university degree in the Jewish law and custom. And so, so for him... Say that it's not the law, it's Christ alone. His whole life to that point was the law. Oh, yeah, his, whole, his whole life. Was still the law. But now it's Christ. So what's repent mean? Turn around. When you just said was it, that's important, right? You said it was a, a complete change. When you repent, you turn around 180 degrees, the opposite way. You were you were walking away from God in your spirit and in your life. When you repent, you turn around and you're walking with God and towards God. That's and that's 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 the we need to think about salvation. It's a walk, right? Which, which way? Where are you headed today? Are you still headed walking in all the light that Jesus has given you, walking in the truth of His Word, or are you rejecting it? Are you disobeying or whatever? Because it sounds like the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem were trying to. Yes, they were. Yeah, so they wanted to Christianize Judaism, so to speak. But you can't do that. You have to take man completely out of religion. Yes. We have to take our own preconceived notions, our own prejudices, our own traditions, and put Jesus alone in there. Yes. It's built on man rather than yes. The, 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 the church in general today is, is really man-centered instead of Christ-centered. And how do we know that? Because so many churches are following the way of society instead of trying to change society to follow God. They want to be friends with the world. They want to. They want the world to like them. Oh, we want the the good feelings. Um, 
my good uh, one of my favorites is John Cooper, uh, the singer for Skillet, and he talks about the, the the woke church today. The liberal church wants wants all the pats on the back, all the feel goods from the world. They don't want to oh they don't want to be looked at in, in a bad light. But see, Jesus said the world will hate you because it hated me first. So we shouldn't worry about that. As long as we're living the truth, we shouldn't worry what the world thinks. We shouldn't worry what the world thinks. Okay, moving on. So why do you think it's our tendency, man's tendency, to be distracted by the law or good deeds or religious activities or whatever? Why do you think it's our tendency to be distracted by those things instead of by focusing on the truth? Why, why do we do that? Carnality. Carnality. Our humanity, right? We, we're emotional beings, so we get caught up in our emotions, right? We get caught up in our desires. We get caught up... And wanting to please the world. We want, we want to look good. We don't want people to think bad of us. So we get caught up in all that stuff instead of just obeying God. If we just obey God and walk in the center of his will and leave the results up to him, that's all we need to do. Not worry about what the world thinks of us when we, you know, this week is a good example. If you're a Christian and you're pro-life and you're out there today and you proclaim that, boy, you're going to have, if, if, you, if you come upon a pro-abortion person this week, they're going to put their nose right in your face and screech and scream and holler. That's, that's, you see it all over the news this week. And you know why? What happened, right? Because of the Supreme Court decision coming and that was leaked and it, it, that was all leaked on purpose to, to cause this reaction, to get people that they wanted to get all worked up. So, again, that's a good example. You can be the nicest person. I've seen the nicest people stand outside abortion clinics and just pray and not do anything and have pro-abortion people come in and just scream and yell in their face. So don't think being nice to the world is going to do anything. It's not going to do anything. Just be truthful by God's word. Oh, the the they are being controlled by the devil. You know, he is the ruler of this world, right? So, you know, the prince of the power of the air, right? So he, now, the Holy Spirit is holding back the full power of Satan at this time. He He's the restrainer. So we're not seeing, but once once the church is gone and the Holy Spirit, the restrainer's gone, then you're going to see the full power of evil take over the world at that point. We're only seeing a taste of it today. But I tell you what, you talk to somebody that has that kind of hate in there that wants to kill babies that bad that they just they, they you can see the evil and hate in their eyes. You can see it. And what you said, it, 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 they're being controlled by the devil. Um, they're not thinking at all. No, they're not thinking at all. Because how, how would they like to have been aborted? Exa- yeah, they, they you you can't talk to people though. I've tried. You you can't rationalize with them. You can't you you need to pray for them. Because you, you, if they have a bloodlust in their in their heart, and that's what it is, you can't talk to somebody like that. You can give them all the explanation of why. You can show them the sonograms. You can show them, you know, all that stuff. They'll yell, they'll screech and scream. Clump. You worry about a clump of cells more than you do the woman's life, and da 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 da. They'll go on and on and screech and and squeal and. Again, all you see is hate in their, and bloodlust in their eyes. And that's, that's what sin does to a person. That's, that's where sin takes you. All right? Now, we talked about these tendencies to be distracted. That's what, you know, we get distracted with things. But the main focus is, is Jesus. So what is the proof that we are saved? And verse 20 talked about it. That we no longer live talking about the self, to, according to ourself, but instead Jesus is our life and our entire identity. We're not just forgiven, but our entire identity is now in Christ. I'm no longer a thief. I'm forgiven, and I put that behind me. I'm no longer a liar. I've been forgiven. I've stopped lying. I put that behind me. You know, I don't care what you put in there as your people identify as today. People, some people identify with their careers. Some people identify with their social status. Some people identify with their financial status. I mean, if you'd ask them about them, the first thing they'd tell you is, you know, I'm a, I'm a this, you know, I'm a, I'm a politician or whatever. You know, 
And the, the big thing in today's society is most people are putting, placing their identity in their sexuality. And that's how we're dividing people today, by their sexuality, with the whole transgender nonsense, the homosexuality nonsense movement. That's, that, that is, people are putting their identity in their sexual urges instead of their core being. And that's the difference. We are called to place our entire identity in the hands of Christ. We are called to give our lives to Christ. So that's how we know that we're truly saved. That we no longer live for self, but instead we live completely surrendered to Jesus. Um, so what does it mean to allow Christ to live through you? Um, and I wrote a couple things down. Give your entire self over to Jesus and to allow the Holy Spirit to guide and govern your life. That's what it means to allow Christ to live through you. And then if there's anything specific, is there anything specific that you should be doing? And I, there's only one. Obey God. Obey God. If you obey God, that covers it all. You obey God. Um, now, when you go back to living by the law or religious rituals instead of by God's grace, what are you really saying to God if you do that? You're turning your back on him. And I wrote this down. You consider Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for us wasn't enough. If you're going to live for yourself or religious rituals or good deeds instead of actually living for God, you're basically saying Jesus' sacrifice on the cross wasn't enough. And I still need to do something. I still, I still need to earn something. I still need to find a way to please God. Mm. No, just obey God. Just obey God. The Judaizers, now this goes back to what we were, that we were reading in Scripture. The Judaizers probably believed that they were guarding the faith, okay? However, what they were really doing was being distracted by issues that were not important in this grand scheme of eternity and creating conflict inside the church. Peter rebuked them by saying, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the back of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. That's Acts 15, 10 and 15. So what's distracting us today from following God? What's creating a yoke of bondage on us today? Are we worried that we're not doing enough to deserve a relationship with God? Hmm. Are we concerned by some other issues? that we're failing God and, and not trusting his sovereignty in all of it. If we are, then we need to return to the basic truth that our salvation is through faith alone in Christ. Your whole life must be in God's hands. You must give it all over. To, you can't hold anything back. You can't, I'm going to hold my sexuality back. I want to live for God, but no, I, I, I still want to identify this. I still want this in my life. Too many people do that today. And that's why we see the church heading the way it is, because churches, have, uh, uh, to keep people, to keep the money coming in, to keep more people in the church, say, oh, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, that's okay. You're, you're okay. Yeah, you live how you, still, you want. Just, yeah, just say your prayer and you, you, you come with us. And that's what happens, right? Yeah, that's, and that's not biblical. You're supposed to come as you are and be changed by Christ. That's what we're supposed to do. Yes, we're supposed to be a new creature. Yes, we're to be a new creature in Christ, not reflecting the old life. All right, uh, jumping ahead here to Matthew 16, 24 through 27, real quick. Um, Matthew 16, 24 to 27. Then Jesus said to the disciples, this is the, this is the crux of all this, why we should put away those distractions. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Um, for the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. Okay? So what does it mean to take up your cross? What, do, what does that mean to you, to take up your cross? What you died to and on. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. I'll tell you why. What I wrote down goes just right along with that. So, 
What did the cross represent in Jesus' day? What was it? It was a what? Instrument of death. So to take up your cross was to take up our cross and die to self. Our self needs to die on that cross. That's why we take it up. Jesus took his cross for us. But then he calls us, in that scripture I just read, to take up our death, to die to self, and then surrender absolutely to Jesus and follow him. That's what take up your cross means. We're to die to self. As Bill just said, he said it so great. Die. Paul's a perfect example. Yes. Because his life, I mean, he, he was a uh, radical in making sure, you know, all was fulfilled. He stood there when Stephen was stoned. Yep. Uh, he was persecuting and arresting Christians. Yep. Stand there, stand there watching them being executed. Yeah. So, yeah, so Paul, Paul had definitely surrendered his entire life to God. That's how he became, basically, the, the most important missionary in the New Testament, writing most of the New Testament, you know, after the Gospels, because God had changed him so, so dramatically, so drastically. And, you know, the change in our lives should be drastic. People should see a change. They say, well, man, he doesn't swear anymore. He doesn't go to those places anymore. He doesn't do those things anymore. His attitude's completely different. He, 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 you see love in his heart and in his speech and his, in his actions. You know, so you, we should be different. We should be changed. And again, we should be obeying God's word. So how do we lose our life for Christ's sake then? We die to self. We put to death our sinful nature because that sinful nature is in opposition to God. The sinful nature wants to, it's, a, it's called, what the Bible says, it's an enmity with God. It's an enemy, basically. So we need to put self to death, self-desires. Anything that we desire before God, anything that we desire more than God, anything that we desire ahead of God must be put to death. And so what life is it then we find when we do this? Of course, it's eternal life. Eternal life, new life in Christ following and serving him. Um, so why is it important then to be on your guard for your soul? That, that, that scripture talked about being on your guard. Why are we going to be on our guard? We have, an enemy. we have an enemy. The enemy is always, it says, prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may destroy. That's us. That's you and me. Yes. And we can give him a foothold. He can't touch us if we're only what God will allow. And if we're secure in God, he can only do so much. He, he has a limit. But that changes when we give him a foothold. If we open the door to him, that's different. We're allowing him. We're allowing him to, t to, to take us on and take us out eventually. So what promises do we have if we allow Christ to live through us? that we'll be rewarded one day by Jesus personally for all that we've done in him, living for him, with the Holy Spirit living through us. So, God does not call any of us to be to an adequate life. He wants us all to live an extraordinary and abundant life. However, for, your experience, for you to experience that life that he's planned for you, you must stop being distracted by peripheral issues, the stuff that doesn't matter, the non-salvation issues. Quit arguing with other Christians over stuff that doesn't matter. Well, I'm a pre-tribber, I'm a mid-tribber, I'm a post-tribber, I'm a no-tribber. Um, you know, uh, we believe in in baptizing infants. Well, we don't. You know, I mean, yes, you can discuss that at times, and we have a, we have our st distinct doctrines. But we should stop arguing about that stuff. Stop letting that consume our time. I see Christians. Do, I see more Christians debating and discussing and arguing over that stuff than fellowshipping and worshiping together and serving God together. Don't allow yourself to be distracted by side issues that don't matter, that don't matter. If it's not something that's biblical salvation, a biblical salvation issue, that's truth. If God's word doesn't define it like as such, why are we arguing about it? Why are we discussing it, right? If there's things that aren't clear, you know, God's word is clear on so much. 
Let's agree on those things. Let's 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 have uh, you know let's have one accord with our brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ on those things and stop arguing over the stuff that doesn't matter. The God who saved you can teach you how to live for him. The Lord who forgave your sins and gives you a home in heaven can surely attend to that person or situation that is causing you distress or concern today. And the Savior that you trusted for your, inter- for your eternity to come is more than capable of taking care of all the matters that burden your heart daily. Therefore, die to self, die to your worries, so you can experience true life in him. Uh, Hebrews 12, 1, 2. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And in closing, life principles to remember. Finishing up with life principles. First, God desires an intimate, daily relationship with each and every one of us in which we experience His presence, trust His wisdom, and rely on his strength for our being, for our living. That's how we live with Christ living in and through us each day. And then the spirit-filled life is marked by purpose, power, and effectiveness for Christ. That's what the spirit-filled life. So if you don't if you if you don't see those in your life, what's wrong? You need to get back to basics. Get back to letting God work in your life. Get back to letting the Holy Spirit lead, guide, and direct. And then you'll see purpose, power, and effectiveness for Christ in your life. So again, principle, life principle number 24. To live the Christian life is to allow Jesus to live his life in and through us. And if we do that, we'll put all the distractions aside. We'll put our worries and concerns aside. Love each other. Most importantly, love God, worship, and serve God and obey Him and live for Him each day. And and that's where we'll get this peace, joy, and love. And that's how we know we're on our way to heaven. That's how we know we're ready to meet our Lord and Savior when the time arises. It could be any day now. His return is imminent. His, there's nothing that has to happen on God's calendar before the rapture. Nothing. It could happen any day. And, and who's to say any of us have, will have breath tomorrow, right? We don't know if we're, if we're going to be alive tomorrow. We don't know. So again, be prayed up. Be living right for God. Serving Him each and every day. Walking with Him each step of the way. Stand with me, please, as we close in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your love and your mercy and your goodness. We thank you for how you've blessed us all and and how you work in our lives. And Lord, may you use this lesson this evening. Use your word to teach us and encourage us and help us to not be distracted by the world, to not be distracted by our own desires, to not allow ourselves to identify as anything else other than a follower of Jesus Christ. Use us for your glory in all things. Help us as we go from this place this evening. Give us safe traveling mercies. Help us down through the rest of this week. And then bring us back here once again to worship together Sunday morning in the Lord's house and and celebrate mothers on Mother's Day. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Amen.